Finally, it brings me to the lower keys. So we've hit a lot of the screen. We've talked about basically the basic setup. We've talked about setting the alarms. We've talked about apnea. We've talked about configurability on the top, the large number screen, the menu on the left-hand side, constant access icons, changing mode setups right here, and now we've got these keys on the bottom. The first one is the actual brightness. If I touch that, I can use my fingers and I can change how bright or how dim the screen is. The next one is the screen lock. I'll touch the screen lock and a little lock appears. If I try to uh, adjust a setting at this point, so let's just say I touch a setting, it won't let me change it. So that's the screen lock. The next one is the alarm volume. So I can use the knob or I can use my finger on this. So that can get, that can get pretty loud. Then you have here manual inspiration. If I touch that, it gives a manual breath. And once again, to remind you, you are giving basically in this area on the left-hand side, you're giving that volume based upon what I set earlier under my apnea settings. So I'm giving 510 milliliters every time I push the manual inspiration button. If I push it too fast, it won't deliver those breaths because it already knows it's in inspiration. So you get a little bit of a raspberry sound. On the other side of the knob, is the inspiratory mechanics maneuver. So if I just touch that button, it does an inspiratory pause by itself. We realize that many times you do this as a routine during your ventilator check, so we wanted to make it a direct access key. And then right next to it is an expiratory pause maneuver. I'll just touch that button. And it, once again, it does the maneuver automatically. And you decide whether or not it's a good maneuver and whether you want to accept that or not. I'll close that down. And finally, the two we already talked about, the alarm reset and the actual alarm silence, which will last two minutes.